morning. I'm Will Farrell. And I'm Mark Wahlberg. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Graham, Graham Norton, Norton Show. We've got a great show for you tonight. Not only have we got four, count them, four Hollywood hunks, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. <laughs> They're back there, they are. But also, uh, joining them later, the new Strictly Head judge, Shirley Ballas, will be here. <laughs> I know. Speaking in that, uh, here's Shirley in action. Oh, look at that. So sexy. So she's even got Bruno interested. Uh, <laughs> Strictly, of course, as you know, it's got some amazing professional dancers. There's some of them, uh, Pasha, Ali Ash, Giovanni. God knows what they're going to do after Brexit, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> they'll be dancing with brooms. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was the usual trip to Blackpool this year. You can always tell when Strictly's been to Blackpool. Yeah, telltale sign outside the hotel when they've washed off their fake tans. <laughs> with four stars from the new hit comedy movie Daddy's Home 2. Our first father and son duo. One is a double Oscar-winning actor and director. The other is the star of Boogie Nights, The Departed, and Ted. Please welcome Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson! That's them, that is! Hello, sir! Very good to see you. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you, thank you. Hello! Are you okay? Winning star of The Crown and Third Rock from the Sun, and the other is the comedy genius behind Anchorman, Elf, and Step Brothers. Please welcome John Lithgow and Will Ferrell! Oh! We could just do that I all know, night long. Yes. Some weeks, wouldn't it be just lovely for 45 Woo! minutes, just whoop for it? Yeah. And, hello, welcome all. And yeah, you're touring, touring the world promoting this movie. <laughs> uh, now, is, it, is it fun or is it, because it is the father, father, son, father, son, is it a bit like a family holiday? Is it kind of stressful? I wouldn't call it a holiday, but we, these guys are great fun traveling and press companions. But making the movie is easy and promoting it is hard. There's no doubt about it. Because don't say that, John. No, we don't. <laughs> this, this is don't let light in on the magic. No, no, no. <laughs> it saved you for last. I don't think we've had any stress, really, the four of us, right? Why are you asking me? No, I'm not asking. <laughs> Asking the group as a whole. What did I do? <laughs> do anything. No, it's, and actually, there's been a lot of stress. This is one of the few experiences where everybody gets along. It's been a lovely experience. You know, usually when you're shooting a movie, people are running right to their trailer. You know, going off on the phone, doing the whole thing. Everybody just kind of hung out. Same thing. You know, we're we're promoting the movie. People are happy to be around each other, excited about the film as a whole, so it's been nice. Mind you, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, some people watching this will be, you know, very surprised to see you kind of in a big family-friendly film like this. Are you sort of surprised that you've done that, come back into the heart of Hollywood? Sure, after digging ditches for ten years, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, it's been a lot of hard work, personally, professionally, and the yeah. work goes on, as I think yeah. it does with most of us. Was there ever a moment where you called, you know what, I'm going to just give up? Public life. I'm going to just get on with my own life. And... Oh no! You know, there's a there's a thing. You've chosen a, a career, and there's a calling, particularly in directing, where you just have to get back up there and express yourself in storytelling. And that never went away. And all those years, I was just writing and conceiving of different stories, which I still yeah. have. And they were back at back the Oscars with Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah, yeah. that was nice. That was yeah, good. very good. Thing. Thing. Didn't get the damn thing, but no, but it still it won Oscars. It did win Oscars. Yeah, it was just bait. It was just out of reach. <laughs> yeah, they again. give it to someone else. Yeah. yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, before we do another thing, yeah. is there a doctor in the house? Why, yes, there is. Uh, doctor Will Ferrell. Wow. Uh, <laughs> since you were last here. Yes. 
Uh, who made you a doctor? Um, uh, the University of Southern California, okay. which is uh, my university in Los Angeles, and I uh, received an honorary doctorate. They say it's honorary. I think it's for real. Uh, <laughs> I've performed 13 successful surgeries since my, uh, and a hundred that didn't go so well. Um, uh, so I'm currently, I have a lot of malpractice issues. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, but at these things, you have to make the kind of the inspirational yes. speech. So what did you yeah. tell the young people? I, um, yeah, it, it, I hadn't been put in that position before because usually I just make fun of things, right? And, and that's, uh, that's easy, but then you have to be earnest. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a difficult task. Uh, so I, I just told them to uh, keep your feet firmly planted on the ground and reach for the stars. <laughs> Which I read on the back of a cereal box. <laughs> but then your speech took a very unexpected turn, I feel. Uh, at the end? Yes. Yes. No, I, I thought I would inspire the graduating class by uh, singing a Whitney Houston song to them. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you choose, Will? The theme from The Bodyguard. Oh, yes. I will always love you. Yeah, lovely. I will always That's love you. That's lovely. Yes. Yeah. And now, apparently you sang the whole thing. I said, <laughs> well, I started thinking, do I just sing a couple of lines or do I torture the students and their parents by singing the entire song? <laughs> and I chose the latter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not joking, we have a little yeah. clip. This is yeah. just a tiny clip yeah. of you. Actually, can it's I just, just say, yeah. you're rather good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we Did you see me look down to try to remember the words? <laughs> Love. Love you. you. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I have to say, uh, John Lithgow, congratulations to you. Not saying a doctor is a joke, but an Emmy is a proper reward. No, that is. Yeah, a proper reward. <laughs> and uh, you, I don't you got the Emmy the for. Doctor. It, no. But you got the Emmy for uh, the Crown for That's playing right. Churchill That's in the Crown. Right. Very good. <laughs> You were, the, you were the only American who snuck through the net into that series. That's right. It was incredibly intimidating because everybody in England has his or her own Churchill imitation. They know his speeches by heart. It is the most familiar face and sound of the 20th century in England, I think. And here I was, this yank, coming over to play the part. So, yeah, it was... It was but now you had weird techniques for getting the voice in you. Well, he himself had a very weird voice. If you really listen, he had an extraordinary lisp that came out of the back of his mouth in, instead of the front. And he had a very nasal uh, sound as if his entire head was stuffed up like a medicine ball. And he had this strange honk, which people don't really know. Mm. It, it just uh, every four or five seconds, he would... <laughs> 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 I mean, to the extent his, his, his speaking voice was really so bizarre that you, if you actually duplicated it, nobody would buy it. Yeah. So I had to sort of figure out a hybrid. Because Mel Gibson is an odd thing, because obviously Australian, but, but as a young boy, you had to kind of learn to do the accent. I had to do the accent because I came from the United States. So how old were you when you left America? I was 12 and I went to Australia. So you just sounded like an American. Yeah, I had to bang it on. <laughs> and and, and uh, you used to, I used to use voice exercise like Barry Humphreys, you know, Dame Edna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote these songs called Barry's Party Favorites. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, he, and, and he used to sing things like, as I walked down the Earl's Court Road into a pub, I was lured. Where do you come from, said a nosy palm, as I down the amber fluid. So I told him straight, I'm Australian mate, and I'm here, and I'm going to get plastered, because the beer is crooked, and all the sheilas look like you, you pommy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't bore you with it. And that's where your accent came from. It's a learnt... It's a learnt yeah. yeah, you have to, you have to learn it. And, and talking of voices, uh, Will, you were saying backstage that, yeah. uh, Mark, you do a very good English accent. He's a master mimic. He just 
did a lovely, fantastic version of a, a high-pitched Cockney woman. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It was 15 minutes of material. It was fantastic. He does impressions of John Lithgow. impressions of all of us. He does impressions of everybody. Yeah. What are you He's kind of a closet of person. I haven't seen your impression of me. Dusty. Brad. Dusty, give him the, give him the stick, Brad. That is Daddy's. Uh, Daddy's Home Too. I should at least get the name right. I should really, I should work at that. Daddy's Home Too. Uh, already, congratulations, a huge hit uh, stateside, and now it's uh, open all over the country here. Uh, obviously, the two of you are back as kind of warring dad and stepdad. Right. But uh, so you've involved uh, grandparents this time, grandfathers. We kind of pick up where we left off in the first one. We, you know, we find Mark and I are kind of uh, co parenting the kids together, and everything seems very copacetic. Uh, and uh, along comes beautiful Don Whitaker here. Brad and Don were very emotional, uh, yep. emotionally available to each other. <laughs> very progressive in the way we talk to each other. Sloppy Everybody sentimental. Yeah. Sloppy. <laughs> so, whenever John. we greet each other in public, we, kiss we, him, we give a nice kiss to each other. <laughs> there it is right behind you. Oh. That could be CGI. We need to see that. <laughs> no, we, we, we did it. I we don't did. know. I want I these people remember. to see it in the cinema, for real. <laughs> yeah. You want them to pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it well, is... that would help. But the casting does seem perfect. The, the four of you as a kind of, you know, father, yeah, son, father, son. Yeah, we think so. Sure. I, I assume the dysfunctional purveyor of tough love. <laughs> <laughs> or as I am, just sloppy, sentimental, brimming over with emotion. And is that you? It, well, it's a sort of extreme version of me. I, I'm, I'm a little bit sentimental myself, you know. I'm not, I, I but can, apparently I you am can, too. But you're, I you're emotional. I am. That's what connects us. That's what yeah. connects us. I, I can. are always crying. I can yeah. cry I, at I, insurance ads. I found you know. myself uh, crying on a commercial airline flight watching The Parent Trap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife looked over at me. and was like, "What is going on?" And I'm like. Because, you know, you know what's going to happen. They're all going to get back together. But I, I just, I couldn't help it. Tears were just streaming down my face. <laughs> Snot. Everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, John, apparently you made yourself cry in a plane. I was watching Terms of Endearment for the first time in many years. <laughs> a movie that I was in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a certain weird version of narcissism. <laughs> you sob at your own performance. I'm, I'm so damn good. <laughs> Release, right? You're breaking my heart. <laughs> Damn you, John Lithgow. You oh, did it to me again. But I mean, terms of endearment is. Oh, the, that's so I, obsessive. It's a completely it's sort of no fault tearjerker. Mm -hmm. It never fails. And, and Mark Robert, I've heard you saying that as you get older, you are getting more emotional. You do more more boohooing. Yes. Uh, apparently, even. <laughs> no, no. There's more. Apparently, even Disney's got to you now. <laughs> Do tell. Didn't you cry watching a film with your kids? Or maybe you weren't watching it with your kids. Maybe you were just watching it. I don't know. <laughs> I have... I, no, I, I get very sentimental. You know, the, the biggest ads that get me now... I've, yes, Shrek makes me cry. All those sort of things. But, well, that's because I'm in it. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know. <laughs> Was Lord Farquhar. I, I a very, Farquhar. very, very moving <laughs> performance. Yes, <sir. laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> hey, listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is the four of you, and uh, Mark, your character, his parenting is being called into question. Dusty, is that true? Tell me that's not true. Oh, criminy, Dusty, you might as well give her your wallet and your 401k while you're at it. Brad, do you let the kids touch the thermostat at your house? What? No. The thermostat is a sacred covenant. I can't believe we're even talking about this. This is madness. Do the Brits call it a thermostat? Because yes. in Ireland, you call it... The immersion. The immersion. Oh, no, no, no. See, now, they were just messing with your head in Ireland. Okay. That's an immersion heater. That's just the hot water. Yeah. That's they just... were implying that that heats the entire house. No, they said just the water. Oh, they did? Yeah, you weren't paying oh, attention. Oh, I wasn't listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that, that is up to. It was all. Was it the whole thing filmed in in your stomping ground in Boston? The whole thing was filmed in Boston. Yes. Okay. Which most people think, oh, that's so cool. You get to be home. I'm like, well, I live in L.A. for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's always you know the person who's John spent. I went to school there. Went to Harvard. Oh, we love it. Yes, great experience. Yeah, you went to Harvard. Come to Dorchester for a while. You're not gonna love it. So <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like a lot of people show up unannounced, uninvited, that sort of thing. And so even even with all of you there, was Mark by far the most famous person in this film in Boston? Yeah, he's, he's, a, yeah. he's a folk yeah. hero. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here. People from across the street yelling his name, and they know him. <laughs> yeah, and they all want money. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, it's me, little Anthony. <laughs> it's so weird, Mark. This guy, little Anthony, is yelling your name. He's like, no, I actually know him. <laughs> yeah, but they'll, they'll expect the jobs, parts in movies. Um, trying to figure out other ways to exploit the production, <laughs> other opportunities to create. Uh, we were shooting a movie, The Perfect Storm, uh, George Clooney, and, uh, and they were. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a bunch of friends visit, show up in Gloucester, and we're kind of standing around in between setups, and all the equipment is there and everything, and they're like looking at this Panavision camera, and they're like, whoa, what is that? I said, it's a camera. And they're like, wow, that looks expensive. I said, yeah, it's expensive. And they're like, we should steal that. <laughs> <laughs> like, how much is that worth? Like, it's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, we're throwing it in the trunk. I'm like, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna sell it to the guy at the corner store for like fifty bucks? I mean, what are you, who's gonna, the guy's gonna be walking around trying to you know, film his kids with a Panavision camera? But yes, that was a very, very real incident. Now, there's lots of adult laughs in this, but it is a movie for families. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and then there are lots of kids. In it. But we hear there's a burgeoning romance between the Farrell clan and the Wahlberg clan. Is this true? Well, I, uh, Mark's daughter. Da, uh, 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 the, what? Huh? Spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My oldest son told me, you know, Mark's daughter uh, requested to follow him on Instagram. <gasps> And I think there was... Oh, now it's following him, huh? Or, or vice versa. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how What it did works. you call my daughter? <laughs> I, this is starting this is to like sound a... like the Montagues and the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? If there, I it did burned white hot for one second. <laughs> I did come to grips with the fact that it is inevitable at some point she will have a dating life and, you know, be involved with somebody. Mm -hmm. And if there were ever... Two parents. What a fun that dad would, to meet, right? Yeah, yeah, so fun. That would spawn a child that I think would be polite, kind, thoughtful, respectful, and worthy of my child's time. It would be from Will and his lovely wife Viv. They are spectacular. Oh. Oh. And so right. I decided <laughs> I wouldn't do anything to the kid, but I'll crack Will's fucking head open as quickly. <laughs> That's his house. He's just joking. He's just joking. That's why I'm sitting over here. <laughs> and, uh, that is home too. It, uh, clearly, the name suggests it's a sequel. Mm -hmm. But yes. here's the thing Is this true, Mel Gibson, that there might be a lethal weapon? Would it be five? Five. Six. I don't know. I've lost. <laughs> Another one, anyway. One of them. Is it going to happen? I'm not sure, but I met with Danny and uh, and Donner, the director, and uh, we watched him in his stage play. He was very good, and it, we started incubating the idea. And it may come to pass. We're not sure, but we're swapping ideas. So, but have you got the the kind of germ of the idea of what would bring them back together again? Sure. I think we'll call it flaccid weapon, or <laughs> <laughs> maybe lethal hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, we, when you're here, we have to mention uh, Braveheart, one of everybody's, everybody's famous <laughs> films. Uh, so, uh, the Scottish accent in that, how hard was that for you? It was difficult, but I was up there and immersed among people who all needed subtitles. <laughs> so I was like, what did you say? And they'd have to repeat it. So eventually it kind of worked its way into my lexicon. And is it true that Sean Connery helped you? At dinner one night he did. And he, he used... He, we were having... We were at Andy Vanya's place, and he's Hungarian, and he made goulash. Now, imagine Sean Connery saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I always have bread rolls with my goulash. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, I've never forgotten it. <laughs>
Goulash. Goulash. It makes you just want to say it, right? It's Goulash. good. Yeah. And uh, talking of iconic roles, ladies and gentlemen, John Lithgow, I did not know this until mm -hmm. I was reading about you going through. Uh, Star Wars, Yoda. Yeah. Uh, you played Yoda, but on the radio. That's right. I. Do uh, <laughs> it. You didn't know this. What is going on? Close what did you talk about on set? Yeah, no, I, I, like a, a year How did after. How we not the, get into this? It's, it's, a, it's a little piece of Lithgow oh, okay. trivia. Okay. I, 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 yeah, yeah, about a year after Empire Strikes Back came out as a movie, George Lucas produced it as a radio series, and he got Mark Hamill and Billy D. Williams and Anthony Daniels, but Frank Oz didn't want to play Yoda merely on the radio. Okay. I was rehearsing a play with John Madden at the time. John Madden, the film director, back then was a big time uh, radio director, but he was directing me in a play. And he shared the fact that he just couldn't find anyone who, and, and I said, oh, impatient is he? <laughs> <laughs> he hired me on the spot. It was, like, it was the quickest job I ever got. So I and if you, opportunist. If you, care to, if you care to find it, by God, that's me as Yoda. Oh, my God. And a very persuasive. It makes me cry every time I hear it. <laughs> Next meet our next guest. She is the Queen of Latin and new head judge on Strictly. Dancing the Cha 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 Show anecdote. Please welcome to the floor Shirley Ballas. She's here. She's here. Okay, she's lovely. <laughs> lovely. She's, she's working the sofa. She's oh, got I'm a, working okay. the sofa. Oh, lovely. Have a seat, too. Uh, how glamorous. We all feel a bit underdressed now, Shirley. Uh, Can I borrow your jacket? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so Shirley is basically head judge on our Dancing with the Stars. Do you uh, all watch Dancing with the Stars? Oh, yeah. You I, I, I really <laughs> <laughs> John, I believe. The rest, no, I don't. Curse with a glance. So, listen, congratulations, uh, because it's, it's Shirley's first year. She's yeah. never done this before. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, people are kind of thinking, well, but the show is bigger than ever. Were you worried before you kind of get out there? Well, I do. I get butterflies because I've never done any TV before. So, just going from being a dance teacher and traveling the world teaching competitive dancers to dance to suddenly being the head judge on Strictly was a little overwhelming. And what happens? Because, so, you know, you're Shirley Ballas, you're a dance teacher, you're getting on with your life, you're pushing your supermarket trolley, nobody knows who you are. <laughs> and then on the, the Sunday or the Monday, suddenly 11 million people have seen you. What happens to your, you know, presumably everybody in the street knows you now? No because they go around with a cell phone like this. So I feel pretty safe when I go on the train. They just have their cell phone or their earphones in, yeah. or I think maybe three, four, five maximum people recognize me. You're kidding. Me. No. Oh, do bother no. if you see her. <laughs> uh, it, it's... I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and now your son was sort of pivotal in you getting this job. Yes, Mark. He's on Dancing with the Stars. And, yes. um, oh, there he is, there he is. Look, yes, on Dancing with the Stars. with Kim Kardashian there. Eh? Ooh. So... How many times has he won? He's won it twice. Okay. And uh, my foster son six times, and my foster daughter twice, so ten oh. times in all. Holy moly. Oh. Yeah. Wow. wow. Ten That's not brag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. That is impressive. So your, your, your son is on Dancing with the Stars, so what, does he get wind that Len is... Wind? Wind. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looked odd in that picture. <laughs> but, um, a, lot, a lot of dancers suffer from they wind. Do. Yeah, yeah, they do. It gets trapped. Yeah, it, sure. It's all about holding it in. The diaphragm. Uh, <laughs> the dance belt. Yeah. So your, your son, so does he hear about Len uh, stepping away? He did. Okay. He got wind. Yes. <laughs> stepping away and he suggested that I go for the job and uh, even though I've done no TV or anything he just thought it would be a good idea so I did and I was fortunate enough to get the position which has been amazing yeah you know, it's, a th it's thrilling and now here's an odd thing because uh, you were at an advantage on the first week when the celebrities walked down the stairs apparently you could tell who could dance 
Well, I can tell by the way people sit, if they've got good posture, or if they... <laughs> if they're using their form, if their feet are... Thank you, Marky Mark. So, by the way, that's how my... I raised my son with Marky Mark the whole oh, time. Oh, lovely. That's what Thank we call him, so... <laughs> feet slightly turned out at five to one. Very nice there. Yeah. Oh, and right. good posture. Yes, you... I can tell them by the way they walk, if they're fluid and flow. Because... Mel, you're going to get locked in that position. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, it's, in, it's interesting, Shirley, because uh, we have a couch of, of men who have quite a lot of dance experience. <laughs> and I know we, we've shown you some clips of yeah. their dances. Now, we'd show, we'd show them on the show, but we can't afford to. But uh, we, showed you, we, showed you back, we showed you backstage. So now, uh, Will, obviously great dance work in Blades of Glory, but in uh, old school, yeah. you did your own choreography, didn't you? I did a, uh, yes, a, a beautiful ribbon dance. We all remember yes. the ribbon dance. <laughs> yes. Look at, that, look at that air. Yes. Look at that lift. Yes, yes, I did have a little look, and I thought he did very, very well with his ribbon. His left arm had a lot to be desired. Really? And it was a good job your ribbon didn't have feet because you tripped over a little bit in the middle, didn't you? You were a little bit off balance. Let's well, say lost your core a I little bit. I did that because it's think... a comedy. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to Mark Wahlberg. Uh, obviously, in Boogie Nights, you, you did do Boogie. You were on the dance floor. Oh, wow. Uh, now, <laughs> this is a terrible question, and, uh, but were... <laughs> was it in there all the time? Or yes. were you dancing around it? <laughs> no, we would have just, like, a birdseed bag at that point. Oh, so, OK. Uh, pantyhose okay. with a birdseed. Just, you could see it dangling around my knee there. Oh, is that it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, I do see that. I thought that was... Yes. That's why they okay. call it pole dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shirley, were you impressed by his pole dancing? Well, what was the birdseed bit? I missed that. Have you seen the film, Shirley? I've seen the film. <laughs> well, remember the bit at the end? Yes. That's in there. <laughs> it's birdseed in a, in a tight... <laughs> OK. <laughs> I was going to say I really liked the way he was able to thrutch his crutch. You know, he had great movement. He had beautiful yeah. rhythm. Very coordinated, absolutely coordinated for a dancer. And was really, like, rocking it, but his oh. pelvic thrusts were the best. Ooh! OK, so Mark's winning so far. Wow. Um, <laughs> Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson in What Women Want. Now, I'm no judge, but you looked like you were really knew what you were doing there. Did you rehearse and train for ages to do that? Yeah, had a couple of lessons, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, it was you were doing tricks and things. I mean, was that all you or was it a, a body double? And... Oh, no, that was me. It took a long time. They say it was one take, but it was 18 times within the single take. Oh, OK. Uh, what were you impressed? Well, your 18 times paid off because he had a, had a little piece where he had his hat on the end of his foot and he flicked it and then he put it on his head and he caressed that hat. <laughs> it was just beautiful the way he twisted it and then threw it in the... <laughs> Dances on the couch, but 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 on the couch there is only one oh denier only of dance. one primo ballerino, <laughs> and that is John Lithgow. Wow. Uh, I give you primo. Here he is with the New York uh, Ballet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now it looks like they're moving scenery, but that is you up there. That's right. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, but uh, did you dance or were you just? Oh no, I absolutely danced. I soloed with the New York City Ballet. Uh, now, while we are talking about dancing, we have to talk about one of the, the greatest dance movies uh, of all time, uh, Footloose. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know. Uh, you, John, now you played the, the fierce reverend who yes. bans dancing. Yes. Uh, but I, I heard you tell a story, a really sweet story, about when you were on the set of um, uh, Third, Third Rock. Rock from the Sun, yeah. yes. There was an episode of Third Rock where the aliens ended up performing in a circus, and there was a, a, a tall, handsome young guy who was playing the circus strongman. And after rehearsing for a couple of days, he took me aside, and he said, "I have to. I was choosing my moment to tell you a story. I, I come from a small town in Louisiana, where my dad was a Baptist minister, and he wouldn't let the kids dance or listen to rock and roll." Footloose came to town, I went to that movie, and you were my daddy. Mm -hmm. And the next night I took my dad to that film without telling him 
what, what it was about. By this time, like tears were streaming down his face. He said, I just have to tell you, because of your performance, I was the first one of six children that got to go to his high school prom. Oh. Now, I never took Footloose that seriously. <laughs> I mean, that was always my kind of teeny bopper film. Yeah. It just, it's the best evidence I've ever heard that you just never know what you're throwing out there. That's a, so, I love that story. It's so, so sweet. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Shirley, you were saying you were, uh, in your previous life, uh, a dance teacher. Have you knocked that on the head now? <laughs> no, I still oh, do really? that. Oh, You will yeah. very soon. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that, that'll, that'll become tedious to you really quickly. Um, <laughs> um, but now, Will Ferrell, you have a love of dance, I know. Um, now, if, if Shirley volunteered to show you a couple of simple moves... Well, I mean, yes, of course, but <laughs> I, I can already tell she doesn't believe in my ability. <laughs> I mean, everyone got rave reviews. <laughs> you had that funny left, left arm. Top <laughs> liver. I, have, I had the bad <laughs> left arm. <laughs> well, you could make up for it now, right? Yes. Do you want to? Do, what, what could you show them? Be very quick. I could show you a cucaracha. Okay, like fine. You know, you know that it's, you're playing hero the music, right? Is that okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because that's a rumba. Okay. So a rumba? rumba is a sensual dance. It's a dance Wait, of love. Wait, hold on. Are we doing a cucaracha or rumba? Well, Which is? <laughs> the action we're going to use is a cucaracha, but the dance we're going to do is the rumba. I'm totally lost. <laughs> if if, well, if, 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 if you try not to get too excited down in the nether region. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How Sorry. about if you could just go side, replace, close? If you could just do that for me. Side, replace, close. Can you do that? I love that? that I'm the only one who How has about to do you this. come over here? <laughs> over here. Me yeah, too. I love that. Let's just do that too. together. And <laughs> side, replace, <laughs> close. Side, replace, <laughs> close. Now, matter what I do. No, 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 no. But whatever I do, place, close. Side, replace, close. There you go. Oh, yeah. So no matter what I do, you're going to do that. My left arm is acting up. <laughs> <laughs> Are okay. we ready for the music? Yes, we're ready okay. for the music. Okay, let's play the music. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Oh, yeah, what, uh, oh, yeah. You ready, Al? How old are you? Oh, okay. Can you keep that Would rhythm? Probably not. <laughs> It doesn't matter what I do. Oh, I just keep doing this. Would you save my soul <laughs> 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 From, from Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Life is a dance. <laughs> uh, it's time for music. You <laughs> wrote it. You wrote it. You killed it. Oh my God, you were just. <laughs> 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 It's time for music, and this award-winning hitmaker is back with the number one album, Rainbow, performing Learn to Let Go. It is Kesha! Now, Shirley, did you watch Kesha walk over? Is yes. she a dancer? Yes, she's yes. got rhythm. Oh, got God. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, Kesha, that is off your new album, Rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, huge congratulations. This Thank is, you. it's out now, uh, first since 2014, but already it's been number one in America, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. My fans are the best, as you know. 
Well, we've, we've had them on here before. Yeah, yeah. And they're the best. And um, yeah, they took it to number one. And that does feel good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But they did that, so. Uh, and listen, on this album, there's collaborations with all sorts of people. One mm -hmm. of our favorites, uh, Dolly Parton, is oh, on here. Oh, she's the best. Yeah. I uh, got one woo. <laughs> <laughs> woo. Don't know. Um, uh, so, uh, but Dolly Parton, now, she's connected to you via your mom, is that right? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I met her once at the chiropractor when I was 10. It's the only time I've met her. <laughs> um, I'm sure she does have back problems. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, we, but we didn't actually get to be in the same room recording the song, but my mom wrote a song that she recorded in, like, a billion years ago, and then we recorded it together, but separately because of technology on this album. But it's a famous song. It's Old Flame Can't Hold a Candle yeah, to You. Yeah, Old Flame Can't Hold a Candle to You, yeah. And your mom wrote that? Uh-huh. Because your mom is credited with lots of the songs on here. Yeah, we write a lot of songs together, which is kind of like weird and twisted, because we write like, like, songs about eating men. Yeah. <laughs> but also love songs. Yeah. <laughs> and is your, I mean, is your, so your mom's around for the album, but is she around for the tour? Is she doing, is Yeah, she, she comes with me most everywhere. She flew out this morning, though, so she's not here. Before. And is that annoying or great? Super fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, I mean, can you imagine? No, it sounds awful. It's horrible. Uh, I mean, I love my mother, but uh, yeah. <laughs> me I, too. I, yeah, yeah, but you know, Christmas is coming, that'll be fine. That'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, that was a fantastic performance. Thank you for bringing you all that, that glitter and, and Thank show you with you. Us. And uh, congratulations with the album. Thank you very um, much. Well done. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, that is nearly it. But before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Okay. Who's in the big red chair? Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Tutu. Tutu? Yeah. Okay. And where are you from, Tutu? Uh, originally from Ethiopia, but I live reading at the moment. Now, can anyone hear Tutu? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. <laughs> so it's working in one direction. <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> I just want to, wow! I just wanted to show her how to work it. <laughs> This is going to be a trying red chair segment, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay, let's try, let's try one more. Let's try one more. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Hi, what's your name? My name's Darren. Darren, lovely. And where are you from, Darren? Uh, I'm from London and I run a gay travel company. A gay travel company? Yes. Oh, right. Yes, you should be booking. Sorry, yes, I. I, I, I really? <laughs> yes. I'll give you a special service. I love my gay travels. <laughs> Airport and the gay plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what was your name again? John, was it? Darren. Darren. John's my boyfriend's name. How do you know that? <laughs> Deep. Uh, okay, Darren. Uh, I'll be you with your story. Okay, so I used to be a journalist, and uh, my old boss was a bit lonely, couldn't get uh, any men in her life, and so I thought for her birthday I'd get her a special present, which was a vibrator. Um, I decided to give her the vibrator. She put it in her handbag and uh, forgot that it was there. Next morning, she had to uh, get up for a meeting. Um, where was the meeting? Buckingham Palace. Oh. Totally forgot that she had the vibrator in her bag and gets Good to security. Good story! Gets to security and uh, has to go through the metal detector and the like, airport security style scanner. <laughs> Comes up on the screen showing this huge vibrator. She suddenly realises, suddenly realises it's in there, kind of looks all sheepish, looks at the security man who sees it, says to her, mm, we'll just let you through, but that's how she smuggled a vibrator into Buckingham Palace. <laughs> One more, one more. This is the last one. This is the last one. That was a good story. Uh, okay, uh, he's just being uh, carried away. Um, <laughs> we're getting over. Who's this? Oh, look who's back! <laughs> it's two, two, two. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, two, two. Hi. Hi. So uh, now, before you were so rudely interrupted, <laughs> uh, uh, you were telling us a very complicated where you were from story. No, I, I come from Ethiopia originally, but I came to this country 20 years ago. OK. And where do you live? I live in Reading. Reading, lovely. And what do you do, Tutu? I run my own uh, cafe called Tutu's Ethiopian Table. <gasps> it's called that. OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tutu, off you go with your story. Uh, 20 years ago, I used to work uh, the uh, Thames Water with 40 people on the team. 
and I used to do data entry in the computer, people's details, mm -hmm. and um, I was stuck on what I'm doing, and uh, I asked my colleague, I said, who's our, our team leader to ask, because I was having problem. So he told me, go and ask Jinja Minj. So that time I don't <laughs> understand languages. So I went straight to the, the person. I said, hello, Jinja Minj. And <laughs> now I know what uh, that means. Yes, I'm sure you do. Uh, you can walk, Tutu. Go on. Yeah, do you can walk. Very good. You could have missed that story. You could have missed that story. Uh, well done, everyone. If you don't enjoy this on the show and have a go on the Red Chain, contact us via website at this their address. And that is it for tonight. Please say thank you to my guest, Kesha, everybody. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. It's Mel Gibson. Don Litko. Will Ferrell. And Shirley Ballas. <laughs> and do join me next week with musical guest Pink actor and writer Stephen Fry, pop star Robbie Williams, actress Carrie Mulligan, and living legend Sir Elton John. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Side, replace, close. Can you do that? I love that? that I'm the only one who How has to do you this. How about you come over here? Over here. <laughs> Me no, too, I love it too. Let's just do that together. And side, side, replace, replace close. close. Side, replace, close. close. No matter what I do. supposed to say it out loud, right? No, 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 no. But whatever I do, replace, close. close. Side, replace, close. There you oh, go. Oh, yes. We're yes. all that little hip going on. Yes, we'll have a little bit of that. So no matter what I do, you're going to do that. My left arm is acting up. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Are okay. we ready for the music? Yes, we're ready okay. for the music. Okay, let's play the music. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Oh, yeah, what, uh, oh, yeah. You ready? I'll help start you. Oh, okay. Can you keep that rhythm? Probably not. <laughs> Doesn't oh. matter what I do. Oh, I just keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> From, from Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Life is about. And right, it's time for music. Oh, you killed him. Oh, my God. You were just... <laughs> 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 That's my boy. <laughs> beautiful. Right. It's time for music. And this award-winning hit maker is back with the number one album, Rainbow, performing Learn to Let Go. It is Kesha! Now, Shirley, did you watch Kesha walk over? Is she yes. a dancer? Yes, she's yes. got rhythm. Oh, got God. Excellent. Oh, Very cool. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, Kesha, that is off your new album, Rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, huge congratulations. This Thank is, you. it's out now. Uh, for about eating men. Yeah. <laughs> But also love songs. Yeah. <laughs> and is your, I mean, is your, so your mom's around for the album, but is she around for the tour? Is she doing, is yeah, she? Yeah, she comes with me most everywhere. She flew out this morning, though, so she's not here. Before. And is that annoying or great? Super fucking annoying. <laughs> 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 so you're like, I mean, Bye. can you imagine? No, it sounds awful. It's horrible. Uh, I mean, I love my mother, but uh, yeah. <laughs> me I, too. I, yeah, yeah, but you know, Christmas is coming. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, that was fantastic performance. Thank you for bringing all that, that glitter and, and show with you. Us. And uh, congratulations with the album. Thank you very uh, much. Well done. Uh, catch you, everybody. Thank you. Wow. 
is nearly it. But before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Okay. Who's in the big red chair? Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Tutu. Tutu? Yeah. Okay. And where are you from, Tutu? Uh, originally from Ethiopia, but I live raiding at the moment. Now, can anyone hear Tutu? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. <laughs> So it's working in one direction. <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> I just want to, wow! I just wanted to show her how to work it. <laughs> I can't, but this is going to be a trying red chair segment, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Okay, let's try let's try one more. Let's try one more. <laughs> Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, what's your name? My name's Darren. Darren, lovely. And where are you from, Darren? Uh, I'm from London and I run a gay travel company. A gay travel company? Yes. Oh, right. Yes, you should be booking. Sorry, yes, I... I, I, I really? <laughs> yes, I'll give you a special service. I love my gay travels. <laughs> uh... <laughs> the gay airport and the gay plane. <laughs> John, was it? Darren. Darren. John's my boyfriend. How do you know that? <laughs> Deep. Uh, okay, Darren. Uh, <laughs> I'll be this story. Okay, so I used to be a journalist, and uh, my old boss was a bit lonely, couldn't get uh, any men in her life, and so I thought for her birthday I'd get her a special present, which was a vibrator. Um, I decided to give her the vibrator. She put it in her handbag and uh, forgot that it was there. Next morning, she had to uh, get up for a meeting. Um, where was the meeting? Buckingham Palace. Oh. Totally forgot that she had the vibrator in her bag and gets to security. Good story! Gets to security and uh, has to go through the metal detector and the like, airport security style scanner. <laughs> Comes up on the screen showing this huge vibrator. She suddenly realises, suddenly realises it's in there, kind of looks all sheepish, looks at the security man who sees it, says to her, mm, we'll just let you through, but that's how she smuggled a vibrator into Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Uh, and uh, along comes beautiful Don Whitaker here. Brad and Don were very emotional, uh, yeah. emotionally available to each other, <laughs> very progressive in the way we talk to each other. Sloppy, Everybody sentimental. Yeah. Sloppy, so Everybody whenever John? we greet each other in public, we, kiss him, we, John. we give a nice kiss to each other. <laughs> there it is right behind you. Oh. That could be CGI. We need to see that. <laughs> no, we, we, we did it. I we don't know. I want I these people remember. to see it in the cinema, for real. <laughs> yeah. You want them to pay. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. Well, that would help. But the casting does seem perfect. The, the four of you, as a kind of, you know, father, yeah, son, father, we, son. we think so. Sure. I, I assume the dysfunctional purveyor of tough love. <laughs> <laughs> or as I am, just sloppy, sentimental, brimming over with emotion. And is that you? It, well, it's a sort of extreme version of me. I, I'm, I'm a little bit sentimental myself, you know. I, 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 but I can, apparently I you can... too. But you're, I you're emotional? I am too. That's what connects us. That's what yeah. connects us. I, I can, you're always crying. I can yeah. cry I, at insurance I, ads. I found you know. myself uh, crying on a commercial airline flight watching The Parent Trap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife looked over at me and was like, what is going on? <laughs> and I'm like... Because, you know, you know what's going to happen. They're all going to get back together. But I, I just, I couldn't help it. Tears were just streaming down my face. <laughs> Snot. Everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, John, apparently you made yourself cry on a plane. I was watching Terms of Endearment for the first time in many years. <laughs> a movie that I was in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a sort of weird version <laughs> of narcissism. <laughs> it just sounded like you were on before. I'm, I'm so damn good. <laughs> Release, right? <laughs> You're breaking my heart. <laughs> Damn you, John Lithgow. You oh, did it to me again. But I mean, Terms of Endearment is... Oh, that's so I, obsessive. It's a completely it's sort of no-fault tearjerker. Mm -hmm. It never fails. And, and Mark Warburg, I've heard you saying that as you get older, you are getting more emotional. You do more, more boo-hooing. Yes. Uh, apparently even... <laughs> no, no, there's more. <laughs> apparently even Disney's got to you now. <laughs> Do tell. Didn't you cry watching a film with your kids? Or maybe you weren't watching it with your kids. Maybe you were just watching it. I don't know. I have... I, no, I, I get very sentimental. 
You know that the biggest ads that get me now, I, yes, Shrek makes me cry. All of those kind of things. Well, that's because I'm in it. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't realize that until the other day. I was Lord Farquaad. I, I love a very, Farquaad. very, very moving performance. Yes, <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Hey, listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is the four of you, and uh, Mark, your character he is parenting. I just want to, wow! I just wanted to show her how to work it. <laughs> I can't, but this is going to be a trying red chair segment, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay, let's try, let's try one more. Let's try one more. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, what's your name? My name's Darren. Darren, lovely. And where are you from, Darren? Uh, I'm from London, and I run a gay travel company. A gay travel company? Yes. Oh, right. Yes, you should be booking. Sorry, yes, I... I, I, I really? <laughs> yes. I'll give you a special service. I love my gay travels. <laughs> <laughs> the airport and the gay plane. <laughs> uh, uh, what was your name again? John, was it? Darren. Darren. John's my boyfriend. How do you know that? <laughs> Deep. Uh, OK, Darren. Uh, this story. Okay, so I used to be a journalist, and uh, my old boss was a bit lonely, couldn't get uh, any men in her life, and so I thought for her birthday I'd get her a special present, which was a vibrator. Um, I decided to give her the vibrator, she put it in her handbag, and uh, forgot that it was there. Next morning, she had to uh, get up for a meeting. Um, where was the meeting? Buckingham Palace. Oh. Totally forgot that she had the vibrator in her bag and gets Good to security. story! Gets to security and uh, has to go through the metal detector and the like, airport security style scanner. <laughs> Comes up on the screen showing this huge vibrator. She suddenly realises, suddenly realises it's in there, kind of looks all sheepish, looks at the security man who sees it, says to her, mm, we'll just let you through, but that's how she smuggled a vibrator into Buckingham Palace. <laughs> One more, one more. This is the last one. This is the last one. That was a good story. Uh, okay. Uh, he's just being uh, carried away. And <laughs> we're getting another one. Who's this? Oh, look who's back! <laughs> it's 222. Two, two. Uh, uh, hi, 22. Hi. Hi. So, uh, now, before you were so rudely interrupted, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you were telling us a very complicated where you were from story. No, I, I come from Ethiopia originally, but I came to this country 20 years ago. OK. And where do you live? I live in Reading. Reading, lovely. And what do you do, Tutu? I run my own uh, cafe called Tutu's Ethiopian Table. <gasps> it's called that. OK. <laughs> um, so, Tutu, off you go with your story. Uh, 20 years ago, I used to work uh, uh, the uh, Thames Water with 40 people on the team. And I used to do uh, data entry in the computer, people's details. Mm -hmm. And um, I was stuck on what I'm doing. And uh, I asked my colleague, I said, who's our, our team leader, to ask, because I was having a problem. So he told me, go and ask Jinja Minj. So that time, I don't <laughs> understand languages. So I went straight to the, the person. I said, hello, Jinja Minj. And <laughs> <laughs> so now I know what's the... Uh... Learn to do the accent. I had to do the accent, because I came from the United States. So how old were you when you left America? I was 12 and I went to Australia. So you just sounded like an American. Yeah, I had to bang it on. <laughs> and and, and uh, you used to, I used to use voice exercise like Barry Humphreys, you know, Dame Edna. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote these songs called Barry's Party Favorites. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and, and he used to sing things like, as I walked down the Earl's Court Road into a pub, I was lured. Where do you come from, said a nosy pom, as I downed the amber fluid. So I told him straight, I'm Australian mate, and I'm here, and I'm going to get plastered because the beer is crooked and all the sheilas look like you, you pommy bastard. It goes on for verses, but I won't bore you with it. And that's where your accent came from. It's a learnt, it's a learnt yeah. Yeah, you have to, you have to learn it. And, and talking of voices, uh, Will, you were saying backstage that yeah. uh, Mark, you do a very good English accent. He's a master mimic. He just did a lovely, fantastic version of a... A high-pitched cockney woman. <laughs> a premiere. Oh, my gosh. It was 15 minutes of material. It was fantastic. <laughs> he does impressions of John Lithgow. He does impressions of all of us. He does impressions of everybody. Yeah. What are you He's kind of a closet of person. I haven't seen your impression of me. Dusty. <laughs> Brad. Dusty, give him the, give him the stick, Brad. <laughs> Uh, 
Daddy, Daddy's Daddy's. Uh, Daddy's Home Too. I should at least get the name right. I should really, I should work at that. Daddy's Home Too. Uh, already, congratulations, a huge hit uh, stateside, and now it's uh, open all over the country here. Uh, obviously, the two of you are back as kind of warring dad and stepdad. Right. But uh, so you've involved uh, grandparents this time, grandfathers. We kind of pick up where we left off in the first one. We, you know, we find Mark and I are kind of uh, co-parenting the kids together, and everything seems very copacetic. Uh, and uh, along comes beautiful Don Whitaker here. Brad and Don were very emotional, uh, yeah. emotionally available to each other. <laughs> Very progressive in the way we talk to each other. Sloppy Everybody sentimental. Kiss. Yeah. Sloppy. So Everybody whenever John. we greet each other in public, we kiss we, him, we give a nice kiss to each other. <laughs> there it is, right behind you. Aww. That could be CGI. We need to see that. <laughs> no, we, we, we did it. I we don't know. I want I these people remember. to see it in the cinema, for real. <laughs> yeah. You want them to pay. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. Well, that would help. But the casting does seem. Perfect. The the four of you as a kind of you know father yeah, son. Yeah, we, we think so. Sure. I, I assume the dysfunctional purveyor of tough love. <laughs> <laughs> or as I am, just sloppy, sentimental, brimming over with emotion. And is that you? It, well, it's a sort of extreme version of me. I, I'm I'm a little bit sentimental. <laughs> Dusty, give him the give him the stick, Brad. <laughs> Daddy's Daddy's. Uh, Daddy's Home Too. I should at least get the name right. I should really, I should work at that. Daddy's Home Too. Uh, already, congratulations, a huge hit uh, stateside, and now it's uh, open all over the country here. Uh, obviously, the two of you are back as kind of warring dad and stepdad. Right. But uh, so you've involved uh, grandparents this time, grandfathers. We kind of pick up where we left off in the first one. We, you know, we find Mark and I are kind of uh, co parenting the kids together, and everything seems very copacetic. Uh, and uh, along comes beautiful Don Whitaker here. Brad and Don were very emotional, uh, yeah. emotionally available to each other. Very progressive <laughs> in the way we talk to each other. Sloppy Everybody sentimental. Kiss. Yeah. Sloppy. So, Everybody whenever John? we greet each other in public, we kiss him, we, John. We give a nice kiss to each other. <laughs> there it is, right behind you. Aww. That could be CGI. We need to see that. <laughs> no, we, we, we did it. I we don't know. I want I these people remember. to see it in the cinema, for real. <laughs> yeah. You want them to pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. Well, that would help. But the casting does seem perfect. The, the four of you as a kind of, you know, father yeah, son, father we, son. we think so. Sure. I, I assume the dysfunctional purveyor of tough love. <laughs> <laughs> or as I am, just sloppy, sentimental, brimming over with emotion. And is that you? It, well, it's a sort of extreme version of me. I, I'm, I'm a little bit sentimental myself, you know. I, 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 I but can, apparently I you am can, too. But you're, I you're emotional. I am. Too. That's what connects us. That's what yeah. connects us. I, I can, you're always crying. I can yeah. cry I, at insurance I, ads. I found you know. myself uh, crying on a commercial airline flight watching The Parent Trap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife looked over at me. and was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> and I'm like. Because, you know, you know what's going to happen. They're all going to get back together. But I, I just, I couldn't help it. Tears were just streaming down my face. <laughs> Snot. Everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, John, apparently you made yourself cry in a plane. I was watching Terms of Endearment for the first time in many years. <laughs> a movie that I was in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a sort of weird version of narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> just sob at your own performance. I'm, I'm so damn good. <laughs> Release, right? You're breaking my heart. <laughs> Damn you, John Lithgow. You oh, did it to me again. But I mean, Terms of Endearment is... Oh, that's so I, obsessive. It's a completely it's sort of no-fault tearjerker. Mm -hmm. It never fails. And, and Mark Warburg, I've heard you saying that as you get older, you are getting more emotional. You do more, more boo-hooing. Yes. Uh, apparently even... <laughs> no, no, there's more. Apparently even Disney's got to you now. The tune we're going to use is a cucaracha, but the dance we're going to do is the rumba. I'm totally lost. Close your eyes and try not to get too excited down in the nether region. Gentlemen. <laughs> 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 okay. How sorry. about if you could just go side, replace, close? If you could just do that for me. Side, replace, close. Can you do that? I love that? that I'm the only one How who has to do this. How about you come over here? <laughs> 
Me no, too, I love it too. Let's just do that together. <laughs> side, replace, close. Side, replace, close. No matter what I do. you're supposed to say it out loud, right? No, 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 no. But whatever I do, replace, close. Side, replace, close. There you go. Oh, yeah. So no matter what I do, you're going to do that. My left arm is acting up. <laughs> <laughs> Are okay. we ready for the music? Yes, we're ready okay. for the music. Okay, let's play the music. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Oh, yeah, what, uh, oh, yeah. You ready, Al? How old are you? Oh, okay. Can you keep that rhythm? Probably not. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I do. Oh, I just keep doing that. Would you save my soul tonight? Oh, my God, I can do this. Oh, God. For a ten from, from Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Life is about. Right, it's time for music. You <laughs> 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 killed it. Oh my god, you were just. <laughs> 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 That's my boy. <laughs> beautiful. Right, it's time for music. And this award winning hit maker is back with the number one album, Rainbow, performing Learn to Let Go. It is Kesha! Never done this before. Oh. Uh, you know, people are kind of thinking, well, but the show is bigger than ever. Were you worried before you kind of get out there? Well, I do. I get butterflies because I've never done any TV before. So just going from being a dance teacher and traveling the world, teaching competitive dancers to dance, to suddenly being the head judge on Strictly was a little overwhelming. And what happens? Because so. You know, you're Shirley Ballas, you're a dance teacher, you're getting on with your life, you're pushing your supermarket trolley, nobody knows who you are. <laughs> and then on the, the Sunday or the Monday, suddenly 11 million people have seen you. What happens to your, you know, presumably everybody in the street knows you now? No, because they go around with a cell phone like this. So I feel pretty safe when I go on the train, they just have their cell phone or their earphones in, yeah. or I think maybe three, four, five maximum people recognize you're me. You're kidding! No. Oh, do bother no. if you see her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and now your son was sort of pivotal in you getting this job. Yes, Mark. He's on Dancing with the Stars, and yes. um, oh, there he is. There he is. Look, yes, on Dancing with, with the Stars. Kim Kardashian. There. Ooh. So, how many times has he won? He's won it twice, okay. and uh, my foster son six times, and my foster daughter twice, so ten oh. times in all. Holy oh moly! Oh. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's not brag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. That is impressive. So your, your, your son is on Dancing with Stars, so what, does he get wind that Len is... Wind? wind <laughs> 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 he looked odd in that picture. <laughs> but, um, a, lot, a lot of dancers suffer from they wind. Do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. It gets trapped. Yeah, it's, sure. It's all about holding it in. The diaphragm. Sam's <laughs> belt. Yeah. So your, your son, so does he hear about Len uh, stepping away? He did. Okay. He got wind. Yes. <laughs> stepping away and he suggested that I go for the job and uh, even though I've done no TV or anything he just thought it would be a good idea so I did and I was fortunate enough to get the position which has been amazing yeah it's, a th it's thrilling and now here's an odd thing because uh, you were at an advantage on the first week when the celebrities walked down the stairs apparently you could tell who could dance well, I can tell by the way people sit, if they've got good posture, or if, they, <laughs> <laughs> if they're using their form, if their feet are at 
Thank you, Marky Mark. So, by the way, that's how my, I raised my son with Marky Mark. The whole oh, lovely. Time. That's what Thank we call him. So, <laughs> Pete slowly turned out at five to one. Very nice there. Yeah. Oh, and right. good posture. Yes, you... I can tell them by the way they walk if they're fluid and flow. Because... Melody, you're going to get locked in that position. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, it's, in, it's interesting, Charlie, because uh, we have a couch of, of men who have quite a lot of dance experience. <laughs> and I know we, we've shown you some clips of yeah. their dances. Now, we'd show, we'd show them on the show, but we can't afford to. But uh, we, showed you, we, showed you back, we showed you backstage. So now, uh, Will, obviously, great dance work. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was like a lot of people show up unannounced, uninvited, that sort of thing. And so even, even with all of you there, was Mark by far the most famous person in this film in Boston? Yeah, he's, oh, a, yeah. he's a folk yeah. hero. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> you just hear people from across the street yelling his name. And they know him. <laughs> yeah. And they all want money. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark. Mark. It's me, little Anthony. <laughs> It's so weird, Mark. This guy, little Anthony, is the only name. He's like, no, I actually know him. <laughs> yeah, but they'll, they'll expect bread. jobs, parts in movies, um, trying to figure out other ways to exploit the production, <laughs> other opportunities to create. Uh, we were shooting a movie, The Perfect Storm, uh, George Clooney, and, uh, and they were... <laughs> A bunch of friends visit, show up in Gloucester, and we're kind of standing around in between setups, and all the equipment is there and everything. And they're like, "Look at this Panavision camera!" And they're like, "Whoa, what is that?" I said, "It's a camera." And they're like, "Wow, that looks expensive." I said, "Yeah, it's expensive." And they're like, "We should steal that." <laughs> I'm like, how much is that worth? Like, it's like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, we're throwing it in the trunk. I was like, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna sell it to the guy at the corner store for like fifty bucks? I mean, what are you, who's gonna? The guy's gonna be walking around trying to film his kids with the Panavision camera. Like, yes, that was a very, very real incident. Now, there's lots of adult laughs in this, but it is a movie for families. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and then there are lots of kids in it. But we hear there's a burgeoning romance between the Farrell clan and the Wahlberg clan. Is this true? Well, I, uh, Mark's daughter... Da, uh, 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 the, what? Huh? Spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> My oldest son told me, you know, Mark's daughter uh, requested to follow him on Instagram. <gasps> and I think there was... Oh, now it's following him, huh? Or, or vice versa. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> What? I, I don't know how What it did works. you call my daughter? <laughs> this is starting this is to like sound a... like the Montagues and the Capitol. <laughs> no, you know what? If there, I it did burned white hot for one second. <laughs> I did come to grips with the fact that it is inevitable at some point she will have a dating life and, you know, be involved with somebody. And if there were ever two parents... What a fun dad would, would mean, right? Yeah, yeah, so fun. ...that would spawn a child that I think would be polite, kind thoughtful, respectful, and worthy of my child's time, it would be from Will and his lovely wife, Viv. They are spectacular. Oh. And so, I decided I wouldn't do anything to the kid, but I'll crack Will's fucking head open as quickly as I can. That's it.